In this video, let's talk about the gas up-res node. Here I have a sphere, and the sphere is getting sent to this pyrosim. And I've already gone ahead and created all of these little microsolvers, as well as adjusted some settings in this pyrosolver to give us this shape right here. Now I'm not going to get into that for this lesson, but what I want to show you is how we can take this low res sim, which is currently at point two, and instead of turning it down here to give us a high res result, we can take this into a gas up res node and save us a lot of simulation time along the way. So here's how this works. We have low res sim, right? If we go to our container tools and we say up res container, we can select this container and press enter. And that container is basically just our, our smoke object, right? If I go back to the top geo level, we now have a brand new DOP network, which is this up-res pyrosim, and a brand new import as well. And what you'll notice is that within this up-res network, we have a lot of the same things. Houdini's actually recognized that we were using a bunch of these microsolvers, so it brought that in, which is pretty awesome. And we also have the smoke object, which points a lot of its settings towards the original pyro sim. Now, the cool thing about this gas up res node is that it's going to take a look at our low res version and use that shape to influence whatever it does. So we have this low res SOP path. And that's basically asking you where to find the original low res version. Now by default, it's, it's just going to take a look at this pyro import network and pick whatever your render flag has been set to. And you actually don't really want to do that. You want to first of all cache out your original pyro and then have it read from a cache file. So I'm going to say this file one. And better yet, a good way to do this is to go to our stop simulation and just be more explicit. So we can go file one, or you know, if you wanna be more polite, you can go ahead and create a null and just say uh, low, low res out, like that. And then we can just say low res out. So it's going to take a look at that low res. We still have all of our microsolvers, and the cool thing is that now we can set this division size to something really low, like 0 0.03, and get a really high quality result out of that. Now, as a little bonus here, if you want to clean up your simulation before you cache it out, you can do a few things. I already know I'm just going to be rendering out smoke here, so create this delete node and get rid of any field you don't need. In this case, I don't need heat, I don't need temperature, Redshift only needs density to render, so I'm not going to waste space with those two. Let's also set down a clean, uncheck these, and then just say that we want to remove all the attributes except for name. If I go up here, I'm basically getting rid of all these detail attributes, as well as this dop object and all that. And the only thing I'm leaving is this density name so that we actually have our field called density. So we do that. One last thing is to convert this to a VDB. So if we say convert, say convert VDB, we will convert this to VDB. So that now the only thing we're caching is a density VDB field. File cache that out, and let's see what we get. And there you have it. We still have the same shape that we defined in our low res, but now we have all the nice detail that the high res typically has. Now there is a downside to this. Uh, you're not going to get all the same little quality improvements that you see whenever you go and adjust it here at the uh, original pyro level. But the cool thing is that we could still capture a lot of that detail with the gas up res and save a bunch of time along the way. Now, one last tip I want to show you is that if we go here to this gas up res, we want to use CL or open CL, right? You can go here and say allow editing of contents and actually go down to the microsolvers right here, especially this effect density, and check on this open CL option 
to uh, use your graphics card whenever simulating with this high-res version. Now, if you are going to do that, do keep in mind that as soon as your graphics card runs out of memory, you're going to not be able to use OpenCL anymore, right? So only check that on if your GPU has a lot of memory. Otherwise, just leave it at its defaults and it'll save you a lot of time. If you found this video to be really awesome, be sure to like, subscribe, as well as check out my full courses, which you can find a link to in this video's description. Thanks for watching.